Hey, this is Dane from FeatherProp.com. Thanks for joining me again. Uh, in today's video, I want to talk about Dana, Pastor Dana, Dana Coverstone's dream for October. A few weeks ago, I talked about his September dream, and today I want to talk about his October dream. Uh, I'm shooting this video on Sunday, November 1st. October is now history, and I think it's uh, proper to be able to review that video, So, or excuse me, that, that dream. Uh, but let me say a few things first, because I want to make this very clear. I have been accused of trying to attack uh, Pastor Coverstone. Uh, I have not been trying to attack him. Um, I, I, I've watched a lot of his videos. I've grown a little fond of the man. Uh, I am. Uh, he's, a, he's a brother in Christ. He loves Jesus. I love Jesus. He wants to serve God. I want to serve God. And he's a brother in Christ. I am not interested in attacking a brother in Christ. Not at all. Uh, and so I am not about doing that. What I am about is truth and reality. Uh, Pastor Coverstone, uh, he's indicated he's not a prophet. I get that, and that's fine with me. However, he says that he has had dreams, which he says are from God, and they contain warnings. Now, as a Christian, as any Christian, I think we would want to know if God is warning us. Is God really warning us, or is he not? We, that's a legitimate question. And um, if a man says, I had a dream and God is warning us, well, we would want to know, is that dream from God? And that's all that I've asked. Uh, I've all, I'm just wondering whether or not the dream that Dana said is from God. Um, now, I know a lot of people have responded because they've done this on my YouTube channel. I've seen it on Pastor Cover, Coverstone's um, YouTube and his Facebook and so on and so forth. forth. A lot of people have said, I, I, I really feel that this is from God. And I, I respect that. I totally respect it. And I get that you have a strong feeling about his dreams. That's, that's fine. But what about those who say, I really feel this is not from God? Uh, in one sense, you re recognize they've equaled that argument because one person's feelings are as valid as another person's feelings. So whose feelings do we follow? Well, the obvious answer is we can't. We can't follow someone's feeling. If someone says, hey, I have a gut feeling about this, fine. But that's not the way we, we determine truth, and I define truth as anything that conforms to reality. That's not how we determine reality, by how we feel. That's way too subjective. We have to apply an, an objective test outside of us, not, not subjective to us. A lot of people have responded and say, hey, I've had dreams that confirm his dream. And I, that's fine. I respect that. However, um, the, begs the question, well, who's... How, how do we know your dream is from God? I mean, now, now we still have the same question. How do we know that you have, have had an inspired dream? Uh, again, it's a very subjective way to confirm something. So what I'm interested in doing is, is trying to determine if there's any objective way that we can determine, if we can answer the question, is God the one behind these dreams? Because if he is, I want to pay attention to a warning that God is, is um, uh, you know, sending me. And if he's not, then that's fine. And that's all that I'm trying to do is determine if there's an objective way in which we can know that God is warning us through Pastor Dana's dreams. So let's talk about his dream for October. Uh, I think he had the dream on August 10th, if I'm not mistaken. And in that dream, I'm just going to summarize it here. There's a lot that I'm missing, but I'm just going to kind of go over it very quickly. It was in the second week of October, he saw groups of people and they had heads like just various types of fireworks. They included federal officials, some he recognized, but he didn't identify them for us. He saw state governors, he saw agency leaders, and he saw radicals, which I assume he means protesters, he didn't really say. In the second week of, week of October, um, their fuses were lit. He called them wicks, but I think he means fuses. Their heads blew up, which resulted in sparks um, starting other fires. He then saw protests, uh, he said they went up another notch. Those were his words. Uh, he then saw protesters attacking peaceful protesters because they weren't violent enough, and he saw them being left uh, for dead along the roadside. He saw protesters attacking the elderly uh, because uh, um, of their faith and their values and things like that. He saw protesters trying to get into nursing homes and nursing facilities, uh, presumably to attack the elderly. He saw a $100 um, bill on a flagpole. It was being lowered and it was on fire. It burned to only about a third of it was left. And while this was happening, he saw groups of people. Some were celebrating and some were mourning that the dollar had died. Those were his words. That's what he saw them doing. He saw puffed up pastors and prophets being exposed. I think this to mean false teachers. Um, 
Um, their clothes were being ripped off of them, and uh, when the rug was pulled off from underneath them, they bit their tongues off. Uh, money was being taken from them as well. He saw sinister clowns distracting people at these uh, uh, voting venues. And finally, he saw a billboard that said, Passover 2021, big things are coming for the world. So those are the, those are the highlights of the dream as I saw it um, in October. I know there's some things that I didn't talk about, but I think these are sufficient to, to meet the test that we're trying to apply. Now, um, the first thing he talked about was the second week of October. If you're familiar with news, uh, you will have seen what had happened here in the United States in the second week of October, and that was the confirmation hearings of um, uh, Justice Amy Coney Barrett. It was all over the news, and as this was taking uh, place, there were people who were whose heads were exploding, uh, figuratively speaking, of course. Uh, this caused a lot of anger, caught a lot of terse words to be exchanged. There was a lot of um, uh, unsettled uh, people, uh, especially Democrats, over this uh, confirmation hearing. Now, did state governors' heads blow up? I, I don't know. Uh, were there federal agencies, uh, their heads blowing up? I, I don't know. Um, and, and those heads that blew up, they caused other fires. And what were those fires? And, and I don't know. I, I don't know how we can trace out every detail of that particular aspect of the dream, nor I, I, do I know if we can. But um, let me, so let me just say this for the sake of argument. For the sake of argument, let's assume that this did take place. I don't know if I can demonstrate it clearly that everything took place in the second week of October, but there are some things that line up. So uh, I'm fine with saying, uh, for the sake of argument, that this took place. And we have to keep in mind that this is just a piece of a larger dream. So it, it's all connected, and it would, you would think that the source would be the same from, from, for everything, not just a sliver of it. Um, and so, for the sake of argument, let's let's move on. Let's con I will concede that that took place, so that we can move on, take a look at some other things. Now, what he saw in the second week of, of um, October is after these heads exploded, he saw protests that went up another notch. I don't know exactly what that means. Um, I know what it sounds like to me. Uh, you know, during uh, the summer of 2020, we had protests all over the country. Um, involving looting and violence, uh, involving uh, burning of property, um, private property, uh, uh, you know, a lot of, of looting of that property. It involved the shutting down of city blocks. It involved the shutting down of roads and bridges and things like that. This was taking place uh, all over. Um, did all of those things go up another notch in October? It would seem to me no. That would be my first response. I don't see how that necessarily was fulfilled. Although because that's somewhat subjective, one, one could say, oh no, it was a lot worse in October than it was earlier. Um, but I think Dana kind of defines that for us. Um, because as soon as he says it went up another notch, he begins to describe something which I think is what he links it to, and that is he saw protesters uh, beginning to attack other protesters because they weren't, for the reason of, they weren't violent enough. Now, uh, ever since October began, I have been um, watching the news. I'm not a news junkie. I don't spend a lot of time um, watching the evening news and trying to read different sources, but I have been during the month of October because uh, there are some of these things I've been tracking. I've been trying to find out if, in fact, this occurred. Do we have uh, news reports of protesters turning on other ones who were peaceful and attacking them, leaving them for dead because they just were, were found to be not violent enough? I found uh, zero uh, evidence of that happening in the month of October. Uh, I have a subscription to newspapers.com, which ser searches like over 18,000 newspapers. I have been uh, looking almost on a daily basis for these reports, and I haven't found one, um, not one account of this. Um, also with that, he described you know, protesters attacking elderly, and he was very upset when he saw this happening. Again, I have been searching news articles and I haven't found any of that happening. I haven't found protesters trying to get into nursing homes or facilities in October to get at the old people. Didn't find that happening. Didn't find one report of that occurring. However, uh, I'm willing to keep that open. If you have found something, if you know of this occurring and you have a reputable news source that reported on it, please leave in the comments section below a link and I'll check it out. Um, I would like to see it if that uh, actually did happen, but I couldn't find it. Um, and it would, things, it would seem like we should be able to track that. That's something that would be newsworthy. Now, I will share this with you. I found it very, very interesting and perhaps even a little telling. Um, I did find, as I was doing my research, uh, um, a, 
um, a situation uh, in Portland where a, an elderly person was certainly abused by protesters. Uh, it's on, it was uh, tweeted on, um, uh, on a Twitter page. The video is available. It's disturbing to watch. It's not very long, but this elderly woman was uh, sort of abused. She splashed with paint by protesters. Also, uh, I found a, 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 a same person tweeted a, um, a person who's seen clearly carrying a Black Lives Matter uh, sign, so she seems to be a protester, and later when she's trying to put out a fire, uh, this lady is uh, sort of being harassed by the uh, other protesters. Not really abused, but certainly being kind of harassed because, and stopped from putting out the fire. Now, what I found interesting about that is the date of that. Both of those happened on August 7th, or they, they were released on August 7th, which is three days prior to the dream. Prior to the dream, uh, these these things were out there. Now, Dana describes himself as a person who reads 40 newspapers per day. He's very well read. He's a news junkie, far more than me. I'm not. But he apparently uh, digests a lot of news on a daily basis. Um, and I found this interesting because you might remember in the very first um, video in which I examined his dream, uh, Dana uh, had a dream in which he saw a coin shortage. And as I, I pointed out in that video, uh, he actually didn't, he didn't predict it because I found news articles of a coin shortage prior to the dream. They were released prior to the dream. So he did, you know, he probably picked it up as he read the news because it was in, you know, it was on the regular news sources. Um, and he just, his dream reflected what he had probably read. I don't know if he did read it, but it was something that was already out in the news. And here we have a dream again, reflecting something that had, it was rather unusual to see elderly people being attacked like that, or, an, uh, you know, a, a protester being kind of harassed because she wasn't, you know, allowing this to burn, uh, kind of odd, but they happened prior to the dream. And I, I do have to wonder out loud here if this didn't inform Dana's dream in some respect. Um, did he come across this? I can't demonstrate that he did or he didn't, but did he come across these news articles and, uh, you know, several days later have this dream in which he saw these events happening? I don't know that uh, for sure, but I, um, I, I just want to put that out there. I think that it is a possibility because they didn't seem to happen in reality. Um, they only happened prior to the dream occurring. Now, next up is probably the most important thing that he talked about in his dream, and that is the, uh, the death of the American dollar. Um, did the American dollar plummet during the month of October? And I think most of you already know the answer to this. Um, this is very easy to follow. There are metrics in place in which we can measure this. I have been following this. There are graphs. You can take a look at them and we can see normal fluctu uh, fluctuations of the American dollar during October, but nothing out of the ordinary. Certainly it didn't fall to one third of its value. That simply did not happen. Um, and if it did, I think any, everybody would immediately recognize because prices would, would skyrocket because the dollar doesn't have its value anymore. But it didn't happen here in October. Now, um, at this point, I'm just going to stop because uh, this is the most objective thing that he talked about in his dream, one of the most easiest things uh, to, uh, to track. And as it appears here, it did not happen. Now, because of this, um, uh, uh, you know, in September, I actually uh, expressed my skepticism. Um, I was skeptical because some of the things that happened didn't seem to line up with the dream as I saw it. Uh, others pointed out that that's, that was subjective and they saw it happening differently. And, and you know, I, and I couldn't be dogmatic. I feel I can be more dogmatic now, uh, now that October's passed. And I can say with 100% confidence that the dream that he had was not inspired by the Holy Spirit. Uh, why? Because I think the Holy Spirit would have a better handle on the future than the results of the dream w would imply. Um, the things didn't come about. They, they simply didn't happen. Um, and therefore, there's no reason, there's no good reason, there's no objective reason, let's put it that way, there's no objective reason in why we should say what this dream was from God because the things did not occur. Now, I want to deal with some of the objections, which some of you probably right now are typing out because, um, in fact, I want to deal with an objection that Dana Coverstone himself raises, uh, which is very interesting. But let me talk about some of the objections that already have been raised and will be raised. I'm going to try to intercept them before you type them. First of all is a very common objection. I've seen it many times over, and that is that 
the God withheld these things. He didn't do them because the people repented and prayed. I actually did an entire video dedicated to that objection, uh, just did it uh, a week or so ago, uh, called Testing Prophecy and the Jonah Exclusion. I would encourage you to go back and watch that before you raise that objection because I'm not going to hash out everything again, but I will just say to you, if that's what you're going to say, if you're going to say that, that God did do this, then just simply provide us a, a sign in which we can test you to know whether or not God did that. We would need a sign, since the original sign doesn't happen, give us a sign that that's, that's what uh, did happen in reality. So again, I encourage you to go back and watch that. However, I'm going to add something to that now if someone's going to raise that objection again, because this is interesting, because in the month of October, not only were some bad things uh, sort of um, predicted to happen, but also I think a good thing was in a way, and that was the exposing of false teachers, false prophets who uh, you know are uh, getting paid for for doing what they're doing. He, I think he called them uh, wealth and prosperity, probably word of faith kind of teachers. Um, I didn't find any record, and I've searched the news. I've looked for the big ones that are out there, and I have not found any of them falling at all. But what's interesting by the objection that, that God stayed his hand of judgment, it would seem to suggest that some people were praying that false teachers would not be exposed, that people were praying uh, that, that they would continue uh, doing what they do and mislead the people. Uh, it would think the opposite would actually occur, that if a re great revival is occurring, if people are praying, if people are turning to God, that God would go ahead and expose false teachers so we know who they are and so we know uh, to avoid them. Uh, so that really doesn't seem to hold any uh, weight at all in my estimation. There's no good reason to believe that God would continue them because a revival is going on. It seemed like that God would stop them. Now, another uh, objection that I know people are going to raise is that um, the, the events were figuratively understood. They're not, they, didn't, they weren't supposed to happen in reality, but they, they were going to happen figuratively. Uh, I do recognize the difference between figurative uh, language and language that is just um, non-figurative, um, just straightforward language. And some of the language that he used was, in fact, figurative, like clowns at the, at the election venues, uh, a dollar on a flagpole, um, uh, heads like you know fireworks and things like that. But of course, that's all figurative language, and I didn't look for those things to literally take place, but they do represent something. However, some of the language, and there was a shift in his language when he talked about protesters attacking the elderly. There was no figurative language used there. Uh, when he talked about protesters attacking other protesters, again, no figurative language used there. When protesters were supposed to uh, break in nursing homes, no figurative language used. And so where he used it, we were looking for maybe ways in which we could understand it. And where he didn't use it, it would the, the normal way to understand it is non-figurative language. Besides all of that, the most objective thing he talked about, the death of the American dollar, um, can't be figuratively understood. Um, the strength of the American dollar is a concept. It, it, it reflects what's going on in the marketplace. Um, a dollar bill doesn't have any strength in itself, not literal, but the phrase, the, the strength of a dollar or the death of a dollar, reflects the, something that's happening in reality, and therefore it can't be figuratively understood because it's reflecting something else. In other words, you can't have the dollar figuratively dying in October, but in reality not. What does that mean? And so um, we can't insist that all of this is just figuratively understood. I think we'd have to understood some of it was, but the things that were not, and I find it interesting that the things that are most easiest to track, like protesters attacking the elderly, we couldn't find record of those happening. Uh, the things that maybe had some leeway to them, sub some subjectivity to them, maybe we could demonstrate that those did. I just think that's rather interesting. So uh, to say that these were figuratively understood, uh, I, in my opinion, doesn't make uh, or doesn't make a good argument. And another argument that I know that is going to be uh, raised is that uh, these events don't, don't necessarily have to happen in October. They're going to happen later down the road. Um, well, I'll first say this, that if all of them did happen in October, no one would be scratching their head saying, wow, I never saw that coming. I thought the dollar was going to fall next June or something like that. Um, because the language in it tells us it was going to happen in October. He starts out the dream, I'm standing in the month of October. Matter of fact, he actually gives us two time signatures in the dream. The first time signature is the second week of October. We know when, when that occurred. And the last one he talked, in fact, he even says the phrase, and the last scene. So the first is the second week of October, and the last scene that he describes is, um, and he, those are the words he used, the clowns at the election venues. Well, the election is November 3rd, but he, I think he almost indicates weeks before. 
Um, so I, he's still talking in the month of October, I believe. So he gives us a time of year, a beginning and an end, and he calls that the last seam, and the dollar is in the middle there somewhere. So we would have expected all of these things normally. I think this is just the normal way of understanding this, that the dollar should have died in the month of October. Um, so I don't believe that that's a good argument to raise as well. Now, I do want to talk about a, an argument that Dana raised uh, about a week ago on a video. I don't catch all of his videos, but I caught this one, and he said some things that I think were very interesting and a little alarming. Um, and uh, let me play this clip for you in which Dana does admit that some of the things he talked about or saw did not come uh, to pass. Watch this video. You know where they're at, and I'm not trying to say everything I've seen has come true because it hasn't. I know that. But... Uh... I believe the Lord is just trying to wake the church up primarily. All right, so there you have it. Uh, uh, Dana does admit that some of the things that he saw, they didn't come about. Um, and which is interesting because if you're going to argue that they did come about, Dana disagrees with you. Dana says he recognizes they didn't all come true. But what he said was, well, I think that God is still trying to warn us. Uh, he's using this to warn us. He's to send us a warning. And I do have some problems with that, uh, some rather significant problems with that. Um, First of all, um, I think that makes very, God a very, very poor communicator. Um, uh, ask yourself, which is going to get you to sit up and take notice of something? Somebody who comes and has dreams that don't come to pass or someone who has dreams that do come to pass? I would think that if God were trying to get a warning um, to us, that he would raise up a man not who has dreams that fail, but dreams that do come to pass. That would make us say, wow, hey, this man is seeing things. It's, it's, it's happening. What's he saying to us? And that will be a good way to get the warning to us. Um, to suggest that God has raised up a man, gave him dreams that don't come to pass, um, so that our so that you know grabs our attention just doesn't make any sense and again makes God seem like a very poor communicator uh, because he knows there's going to be people like me and probably many like you we're watching to see if these things come to pass so that we know if we should listen to this man and when they don't come to pass um, we're going to simply just um, you know well I'm not going to listen to him so again I don't I, I, that that troubles me a little bit and the reason why it troubles me is because in some of his earliest videos I think it might have been the very first one he said if these things don't come to pass and I don't know exactly how he worded it but he said that he'd be responsible for it that he would take responsibility for the things that he said and I almost see a little bit of shift and I don't think it's necessarily a shift in him necessarily but some people around him there are some people uh, he named in that particular video that are working with him on interpretations I've watched some of those videos and um, they're extremely subjective in how they're they're interpreting his dreams and I think they're convincing Dana that these things aren't going to happen in, uh, in literally but there's a figurative understanding for them and so I think he's now relaxing his position a little bit uh, um, on that and um, that disturbs me a lot actually a matter of fact in my next video uh, I'm going to put out a challenge to Dana he probably won't watch the video but I, I, I want to put out a challenge to Dana himself on how he can test these people who are interpreting his dreams, how he can test to see whether or not they are telling him a true interpretation or, or not. And I think that's very important. Um, again, I'm not attacking this man. All I'm trying to do is find the truth, and I'm doing this as reasonably as I know how. Uh, so I'm going to end this video. I'm sure I lit a few fuses and there are heads blowing up everywhere with some of the things that I've said, but uh, I'm just a man trying to figure out what God is saying, and I don't think that I've done it unreasonably. So in any event, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time.